Question 19 is to graph ellipsis. Here the equations will be given. You need to graph it out. All your problems are based on the vertical orientation, but even if it's horizontal orientation, there is only a little bit of difference. We will solve this problem now. First thing, you need to write the standard form. What I personally do is I always write x squared first plus y squared. I will not write this equals to 1. And now I look over here, which is a bigger value. Now this number over here is bigger, isn't it? That is below y squared. So that is going to be a squared and this is going to be b squared. The bigger value in the denominator denotes it's a squared, a value. And then the other one will be obviously the b squared. So this is important. Don't just try to figure out which orientation. Just write this x squared plus y squared equals 1. Look into the value which is bigger and then write it out. Now, looking at the standard form, you should know this is vertical orientation, isn't it? Why? Because if y squared as the denominator of a squared, that is the vertical orientation, the answer of the graph will be something like this. Okay, it might be drawn like this. If we had x squared by a squared, if there was a bigger value below x squared, then it's going to be something like this. Okay, that's the thing. Now, you might have thought, why didn't I write this? That's fine because we know the center is not at 0, 0. It is somewhere else. So what happens is we just write x minus h the whole square, y minus k the whole square. I know in your textbooks, I guess it's given as y squared by a squared plus x squared by b squared. Try to avoid this form. The reason me saying this is because then sometimes students do a mistake with the centers. They take whatever the value is in the first place as the x value and then the y value. There might be chances of you making mistake. So try to get this first form. Now, once you're clear with this form, it's much easy. If you know the basics of ellipse, we can easily graph it out. You need to find a and b. This is a b squared. Now let's find a and b. How do we find a and b? This whatever is a squared, right? So just find a squared is equal to 128. So what is a value? A value will be the square of 128. You can find it out easily in the calculator. And what about this one over here? b squared is 36. So b value is plus or minus 6. We take the positive value only over here. So it's 6. Now, what is the h and k value? This is the center of the ellipse, h and k. h is whatever is, see, now don't take this as minus 3. It is minus h. So h will only be 3. Whatever is the sign over here in the given equation, take the opposite sign over here. Minus 3 means 3 and k is 2. So this is the center, center of the ellipse. Now, what about these two? Why do we need them? Now, when we graph, we need to know which is the uh, major axis, minor axis and everything. For that, we need. And to find the focus point, if you see the question, they have asked you to find the major, minor, okay? And the focus, see, this is very important. So, how do we find C? C is always denoted by focus point. Now, in an ellipse, the formula is like this. I will write the formula over here. It is a squared will be equal to b squared plus c squared. Why? Because in an ellipse, the a squared value is the hypotenuse. So how do we find c squared? c squared would be, just take this b to the other side, it will be a squared minus b squared. That would be the answer. So all you need to do here to find c squared is... Now we have a squared value, it's 128 minus 36, or c is equal to square root of this. Now when you find square root, it will be uh, 192 over here, square root of 92 would be the answer. Now you can just put everything in the calculator and get the values. You know a, b, c, the center, you can easily graph. In the exam, you will be given a graphing grid, so it'll be easier. So let's just draw something like this. Oh, now one more thing. I just realized it's major axis. This is not major or minor axis. This is just the A value. 
you need to substitute 2 times a that is 2 times the root of 128 this is the major axis major axis and 2 times b is the minor axis that is 12 okay now why this is required is when we graph it out now the center is 3 i will consider this to be 3 this to be 2 x is 3 2 this is the center now you need to find the vertices like we will have some graph uh, ellipse like this i just draw a rough one like this you need to find this vertex this vertex this one and this one right and then the focus focus will be somewhere inside over here on the major axis and over here these are the things you need to find now how do we do that is we know this is the center 3 comma 2 now add the b value you will get the minor axis add the b value to this so x you just add 6 to the x part over here this one will be at 9 comma 2 and what about this minus uh, 6 from this it will be at minus 3 now this is not accurate uh, you can just first write these points then accurately draw it if you have a proper grid it'll be easy and now what about these major uh, points the vertex the up and down so that will be where is a value now this a value you need to put in the calculator and solve it first and then just add it up and down it will change the y axis y value only so let's take the calculator the square root of 128 is 11.31 uh, so here what is the y value already we are at 2 so add 11.31 to 2 it will be over here 13.31 that is the y value and x value will remain 3 itself that is the point and this one over here will be you need to subtract 2 from this so it will be 9.31 and the x value will be 3 itself so this is the major axis is minor axis is but they have not exactly uh, you don't need to you know denote these points every now and then i'm just doing it for this graph but if you mark the focus points if you write the focus points is enough how do you do the focus points you need to add the c value so let me just draw a few things here this is b so this much is b and this is also b value what about this the uppermost point will be a okay the uppermost and over here it's the same thing my graph is not at all to scale i hope you understand what i'm trying to say over here and this one is c and this one over here the focus points is c now how do we find c we already found c value that is the root of 92 so just put root 92 sorry 92 and it's 9.59 so you need to add 2 to 9.59 it will be 11.59 the x value will be 3 itself over here i'll write the focus points over here it will be 3 comma 11.59 and what about the other point here bottom one 3 comma minus 2 it will be 7 minus 7.59 3 comma minus 7.59 these are all the things you need in the graph i think so this is more than enough let's just look into the answer yeah that's it so you can see it's 13 they have not marked these points but it's better you do it in the exam see i mean uh, you don't need to write it out you can write it out but make the points over here and then do it you can also put this in the table you know you can make mode 7 and find the values but that will be complicated but this is the easiest way to do it okay this would be the easiest of all ways please try to stick with this method or if you know any other method which is more easier go with it it's fine because we have to find these values anyways a b c so with that we can easily graph it out and let's look into the answers the minor axis is 2b it's 12 the major axis is this you can just put in the calculator it will be 22.63 and then we have found these points the foci points 3 comma 11.59 and 3 comma 7 minus 7.59 and the center so these are the things which are required if you find extra things also it's fine but these are more than enough that's how we do it please do try the other problems by yourself the concept remains the same and you have all got the vertical orientation itself here you can see below y 
y square, it is a bigger number, so this is a square value. When you graph it, it looks something like this. And same thing here. Again, it's a vertical orientation. Now here, what is the center? There is nothing subtracting x squared, so it's 0, 5. So the center will be 0 and 5. It will be over here. Again, a similar problem. Over here now, the center of y is same. The y is at 0, sorry. See, you can see the y-axis of the center is 0. Whereas the x will be minus 4 because it's plus, it will be minus 4 shifted over here. And you can do the same method. Now, what about this problem here? We don't have the standard form of the ellipse. So we need to first derive the standard form of the ellipse and then solve it up. How do we do that is by the method of completing the square. I will show you the shortcut for completing the square. I won't do everything in detail. So first of all, write the x terms over here. I'll write the x terms. It's 3x squared and we have minus 6x. Then what about the y terms? It's plus y squared and over here it's minus 8y and what do we have here? It's minus 5 equals 0. So this is the thing. Here you need to group these x squared minus x and complete the square. You need to make this in terms of x minus some number, the whole square. How do we do that is for the shortcut method, direct method, you cannot have any coefficients. If you have any coefficients, remove that. So take this coefficient out. 3 is removed outside. So you will have just x squared and 3 is removed from here. So it will be minus 2x. So now we can use the direct completing the square method here. What about this? Same thing. Plus y squared minus 8y. Now what about this minus 5? You can take this to the other side and leave it because you will have some more numbers which we will allow to take it to the other side. So now we will complete the square. Now remember this term, see this much is one single entity now when we solve it. It will be 3 multiplied with the completing the squared method. See how do you complete the squared is whatever is squared, no coefficients, x squared becomes x. This sign if it's plus you write plus here it's minus so we write minus. The, this coefficient just divide by 2. Don't write the x. X gets x is gone. Only we write 2 divided by 2 is 1, the whole square. See, this will balance it out. The squares, right, will be balanced up over here. But now we are we are still not equated properly. This x square minus 2x is not this much. We need to subtract some part. What is that part? The square of this number. What is the square of 1? One. This is the completed square method. I'll just prove it to you. Let me uh, let me expand this. X minus 1 the whole square is equal to what? It will be X squared minus 2X plus 1. And then there is minus 1. When we add this, now look over here. What happens? It will be X squared minus 2X only. This cancels out. So we are having the above equation itself, right? So knowing that this is the formula. We rearrange and get it out. So we can directly do it. Now you can try this by yourselves. You can pause the video now and do it by yourselves and then continue watching. Here if you have tried the first term, there's no coefficient. So we write only y then minus and over here it's 8. We divide it by 2. So it will be 4 the whole square. And then don't forget to subtract. What do we subtract by? Not this number, not this, the square of this, whatever we divided, right, 8 by 2, the square of this number is 4. 4 squared is 16, so minus 16. You can write 4 squared or 16. So this is one more entity. That is all equal to 5. So now here in the left side, remember you need to multiply this 3 to both the terms because this entire thing is this, right? So this 3 is multiplied, distributed properly. So 3 into x minus 1 the whole squared minus 3 plus y minus 4 the whole squared minus 16 is equal to 5. Now these numbers we can take it to the other side. It's 16 minus 3 that is negative 19 but moving to the other side it becomes positive 19. And we have here 3x minus 1 the whole squared plus y minus 4 the whole squared. Uh, and oh, don't forget this 5 already which is there. So the answer is 19 plus 5 is 24. And we have y minus 4 the whole square 
3x minus 1 the whole square. Is this done? No, we have something remaining. That is, this should be 1, isn't it? Now we have 24. So what we do is we divide all the sides by whatever this number we get. Over here we got 24, so divide 24, 24 and 24. Now this equation will be the uh, standard form of the ellipse. 3, 1, 3, 8 times. So we will have, I'll write it out over here. x minus 1 the whole square divided by 8 plus y minus 4 the whole square divided by 24 equals 1. This is the uh, equation for the ellipse. So that's how we do it. And now we can easily find the center, the 2a, just like what we have done a while ago. The center is 1, 4. The a value is 4. You just divide these by 2. This is all, sorry, squared. This is, here is a squared. This is b squared. The focus also can be found out by the formula of c squared equals root of a squared minus b squared. And you can easily solve it. We just did it a while ago. So same procedure, same method can be employed here. And this is how the graph would look. You can see we got the center of 1, 4. And this just proves that this is right. And then you can do the other method. other, And then you can find the other, uh, other values. That is the major, minor, axis, focus, and etc. So that is how we basically solve these graph and ellipse problem just remember if the equation is like this first you solve it up write it in the standard form and then uh, then graph it so that's the end of this topic this is the last question please solve all these problems by yourselves when you solve it by yourselves when you're graphing them you might get some questions doubts and then you'll understand it better if you still have any doubts please do post them in the comments and i'll get back to you very soon